Good evening. Holy Thursday, or Monday Thursday, is the night we commemorate the Last Supper when Jesus shared the Passover meal with his disciples on the night before he was crucified. The word Monday comes to us as an Anglo-French word derived from the Latin mandatum, which means commandment. It refers to Jesus, offering this to his disciples, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. The theme of this service is love, and the focus is forgiveness. During this service, we will join together in Holy Communion. You are invited to get your juice and bread ready now. The elements represent the body and the blood of Christ. It matters not what elements you are using. The sacredness comes in remembering the actions of Jesus and how much we are loved in and through those actions. Regardless of whether we are together or apart, we are still the United Methodist Church. And we still practice an open table. You need not be a member of this church or of any church to share in a life with God. God simply asks that we make our hearts right with God and right with our neighbor. All of God's children are invited into a life of grace and a life of forgiveness, and all may participate in receiving the goodness of God's love. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. I hear the clear, the far off hymn that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep? from singing Through all the tumult and the strife I hear that music ringing It finds an echo in my soul How can I keep from singing no storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging since love is Lord of heaven and earth how can I keep from singing how is it people will recognize us as followers of Jesus? Simply by how we treat one another. Let us confess how we have not loved as Christ loves us. Creator and loving God, you kneel to wash our feet, yet we are reluctant for you to see all the places we have gone in our attempts to escape you. You would bathe us in the warm, living waters of your love, yet we splash and play in the puddles of temptation. We have received all the gifts you have to offer, yet we are tempted to think they are only for us rather than sharing them. Forgive us, Holy One, and have mercy on us. What can we give you for all your wonderful graciousness towards us? As you have broken your heart for us, may we open ours in service to others. As you have called and given your life for us, may we offer ours to bring healing to the world. As you have called us together around your table, 
may we go forth to feed a world hungry, not only for bread, but for that spirit which brings peace and reconciliation. This we pray as servants of Jesus Christ, who came to serve us in life, in death, in resurrection hope. Let us pray silently. On this holiest of nights, we have received the good news. God has come in Christ to Jesus to fill us with hope and peace, to bathe us in grace and mercy. In remembrance, we go forth to bring hope where despair resides, to be servants to those who are broken, to love as selflessly as we are loved by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live. The Gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. The humility of love. John 13, verses 1 through 17. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do, not know, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he had put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash, ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them.
teach me thy patience still with thee in closer dearer company in work that keeps faith sweet and strong in trust that triumphs over In hope that suns a shining ray far down the future's broadening way, in peace that only thou canst give with thee, O Master, let me live. The Gospel of Jesus Christ according to John, the mandatum novum. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I have said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. everyone born a place at the table for everyone born clean water and bread a shelter a space a safe place for growing for everyone born a star overhead and god will delight when we are creators of justice and joy yes god will delight when we are creators of justice justice and joy for young and for old a place at the table a voice to be heard a part in the song the hands of a child and hands that are wrinkled for young and for old the right to belong and god will delight when we are creators of justice and joy yes god will delight when we are creators of justice justice and joy for everyone born a place at the table to live without fear and simply to be to work to speak out to witness and worship for everyone born the right to be free and god will delight when we are creators of justice and joy yes god will delight when we are creators of justice justice and joy
the Word of God, remembering the Last Supper, 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 20, or verse 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We are experiencing Holy Communion this evening in a new way. Though physically separated from one another, we are still bound together as the family of God. As members of the household of God, we now join together virtually, yet still present to one another as we gather from across the miles. This presence is marked by our shared praises and prayers, our shared hearing and affirming of God's word, and now our shared eating. Let us celebrate with Jesus at the table of peace. For he loved his own even to the end. Let us eat the feast with him. For now nothing can separate us from his love. And let us love one another well. For he laid down his life for us all. Praise to you, God of glory. Your love created the universe and sustains it. You breathed life into our dust and placed us in paradise. You found us when we hid ourselves, ashamed of our sin. Your love shaped a people, and you are their God to this day, in an alliance that lasts forever. In the fullness of time, you called us also to be your own through the tender mercy of Jesus. You spoke to us with his human voice and healed us with his human hands. He gave us his life in bread and wine, and suffered for his faithfulness on the cross of shame. But you loved him faithfully, raising him from the dead. You sent his spirit into our hearts and adopted us, making us heirs of his glory. Forever we belong in your household of joy. Holy and wonderful God, all your creatures testify to your love. With them we too declare it, as with the angels of heaven we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now, O oh God, we remember Jesus. We remember that he longed to celebrate the Passover with his friends. He arranged for a meal, his last in this life. We remember that he gave them a new commandment, Love one another as I have loved you. We remember that he gave them an example. He knelt before them. He washed their feet. We remember that his betrayer was with him, and Jesus loved and served him too. And we remember, God, that on that night, with danger and death in the air, Jesus remembered with joy the deliverance of his ancestors from the oppression of Pharaoh. He told the victory story, he ate the bitter herbs, and he shared the unleavened bread, and he drank the cup of blessing. In love for us, Jesus took bread, he gave thanks to you, God, and he broke it. He gave it to them, saying, take and eat this, all of you. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup filled with wine, he blessed it in your name, and he passed it to his friends, saying, this is the cup of a new covenant in my blood. Do this and remember me. Holy Spirit, come make all things new. Bless this bread and cup and all of us who share them. May they be for us life-giving food and drink and give us love for each other and make us servants in the world 
until your new age of justice comes and every creature beholds it. In this season of social distancing, may you remind us that we are never distant from you. We pray in the name of Jesus, who welcomes us all and taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, if you are hungry for a taste of what is to come, when all creatures great and small will feast together without fear in the household of God, if you yearn to feast on a love without condition and without end, if you are thirsting for forgiveness given and received in humility and in joy, then open your hearts to this meal, a sign of grace, a gift of peace, the bread of life, the cup of joy. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jim and Henry, I invite you to come to the table and to receive your bread. Your bread. And I invite us to prayerfully partake in the bread of life. I invite us to prayerfully partake in the cup of salvation, the cup of community, the cup of friendship. Let us pray. Thank you, holy God, for life in the spirit of Christ for gladness in this bread and cup, for love that cannot die, for peace the world cannot give, for joy in the company of friends, for the splendors of creation, and for the mission of justice you have made our own. Give us the fruits of this holy communion, oneness in heart, love for neighbors, forgiveness of enemies, the will to serve you every day, and life that never ends. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. The promise. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and 
he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. Now behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God, who bore on my sin that I may live again, the precious Lamb of God. Holy is the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know the precious Lamb of God. Thank you for the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Because of your grace, I can finish the race, the precious Lamb of God. Oh, behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Who bore all my sin, now then I'm again the precious Lamb of God. 